So um, let's not beat around the bush. Let's bring Mr. Charles Phoenix up right now and let's wrap this escape to Tiki Island up like it's meant to be with Mr. Charles Phoenix. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, and welcome to... How's everybody? Are you good back there, too? I thought so. And you two over here? I know. So, behold the glory of us here tonight in this historic theater celebrating 107 years. Feel the layers of time, the soul, and the heart of this landmark theater here in Santa Ana. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, anyway, you guys ready for the retro Hawaiian vacation slideshow tour extravaganza? Now please keep in mind, I am not an expert on Hawaii, I am a mere enthusiast. And, uh, no I'm not, I'm just a mere enthusiast. Are we ready to go right now? And by the way, half the stuff I say, I make up. Okay, so here I am by the way, this was my first leap into Tiki, the Tiki world, on my dad's used car lot in Ontario, California, which I was born on. Yes! I was born in the back seat of an old car. Yeah, uh-huh, I know. So, uh, when I was in fifth grade, when this picture was taken, I'll never forget the day my mother said to me, I'm going, I'm going to House of Fabrics to buy some fabric to make you a shirt. And I'm like, thank you, Mommy. I better go with you and pick it out. So what did I do? I picked out Hawaiian print fabric with a, and I chose the black buttons to go with it. Yes, I know. Speaking of, here we are, you know, Hawaii is only hours away, Fly United, DC-7. We are at the corner of Hollywood and Vine in legendary, uh-oh, legendary landmark Hollywood at Hody's Restaurant. Garden room, coffee shop. Oh, you were so nice to help me with that. Thank you. Oh, I don't want to lose any of these. They were a dollar each. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anyway, so you guys, we're at Hollywood and Vine right now. It's like 1962. And you know what the weird thing is? Recently, speaking of my mother, she said to me, you know, when I was six months pregnant with you, I ate at Hody's at the corner of Hollywood and Vine. And she said, I remember exactly what I ordered. She said, I ordered Yankee pot roast to beef and a Shirley Temple to wash it down with. I said, well, that explains everything. <laughs> uh -huh. So you guys, it says celebrate the 50th state, uh, Hawaiian pineapple treats. I don't know where this dairy delight is, but I wish that I did. And if it were still there, I would be there right now ogling the tail fins of that 1958 Plymouth Velvet, oh, it's a Plymouth Savoy. The Plymouth Savoy, yes. How much do we all love a 58 Plymouth Savoy? And a beautiful, rich shade of turquoise metallic over an Arctic white. Uh-huh, I know. Anyway, I don't know about you guys, but I love every little detail of this mid-century modern masterpiece of a soft serve stand. How much do we all love soft serve? Yeah. I know. And I'll be darned anyway if the darn uh, photographer didn't cut off the penguin there with his bow tie holding on to that big giant soft serve. But never mind, that makes us focus our attention on the guy looking at us, that big dildo trash can. <laughs> The lady inside who thinks she needs to wear a nurse's uniform to work there. And whoever the font designer was here on the Dairy Delight font designers, now would be your time to take a note. I love how it says Dairy Delight. 
Not you. That big E, I know. Well, since Hawaii has become the 50th state, it's time for us to start having backyard competition, exotic island dinner parties, patio parties. How much do we love a Polynesian patio party? How much do we all love when we can put three P words together? I know. Anyway, yes, here we are. First of all, is this young man the creative design genius that saw fit to get crepe paper streamers and scotch tape them up over the windows? Where do we begin? The posters, they're gonna drop some balloons. Thank you. How about the Chinese lanterns and, of course, back in the day, you guys, so seriously, not joking around, everybody thought if you're eating like anything islandy or Polynesian-y or anything like that, you had to sit either on the ground or a foot from the ground. The table they made special for the event. Not only that, how much are we seriously loving the fact that they've got toilet paper lays? Why, oh why, oh why, I ask you, why are we not making toilet paper lays for each other? They could do double duty. <laughs> Whatever you do when you have a party, do yourself a favor and do not wear your wearing blender out by making everyone a cocktail. You do not need to do that. One cocktail for 14, or is it how many people are here? Anyway, however many of these people are, yes, you, you don't walk out your back door at your Polynesian patio party and say, cocktails are served. You say, cocktail is served. As you, as you, Try to balance a heavy watermelon in your hand, up in the air like this, that has been soaking. You've turned a bottle of booze, whatever you like. Rum is preferred in this crowd. Soak it overnight in there and stick a bunch of straws in there, however many people you have at your party, your Polynesian patio party, and say, and you lay it down on the ground, and you say, gather around, and you watch them lay down on the ground like a sunburst, starburst, and start zipping away. I know. Yes, uh-oh. Okay. This is major. This is real. This is deep. Are you ready for someone who actually killed an entire fern garden? <laughs> no more tablecloths for us. No kill plants in your neighborhood. Go to the lady's house next door and just chop down her entire fern garden. Oh, I forgot, we don't have ferns anymore. They require too much water and we don't have any. I know. Anyway, but okay. I, I, I just, yeah, feast your senses on that, and then can we have a serious talk about the fact that somebody is using their grandmother's china outside? This is the good stuff that somebody got for a wedding in 1957, and now, all these years later, whoever has inherited it, if you have some of this like this, everyone knows we don't care about it at all. Not unless it's the starburst pattern. <laughs> oh, I know. So, here's what you do. You have your party, you use your great grandma's china, the fine good stuff that you don't care about, and when you're done, you pretend you're at the, the Renaissance Fair and let everybody throw as much as possible of it against the block wall. Break it all into smithereens, why not? But who's talking about smithereens right now? When you have a centerpiece like that, behold the glory of true centerpiece greatness. For who was the creative design culinary genius that saw fit to get in that kitchen and chop up those, veg those uh, fruits, those tropical fruits, and stick them in a pineapple on a raised base? Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? Someone needs to do that, don't you think? I know. Speaking of, here is the Patio Polynesian Party now. Oh yes, we are. <laughs> matchy Matchy on the left. That's a honeymoon set. Apparently, they're getting along very well. 
And then we have something no evil next to him. Yes, the Calypso pants. You're right, the Calypso pants. And then we have another matching set. We have a lone lesbian, another matching set. A married couple over there and another lesbian on the right. Well, how nice. Maybe they can get together later. But we're not talking about lesbians getting together right now. Oh no. We're talking about what's for dinner? Where do we begin? First of all, get the most, the biggest, most giantest, like, cow rib bones you can possibly get in your back seat of your car. Fry up some chicken or roasted or whatever, a big bowl of pickles, don't you love? I don't know what those like are, a cross between breadsticks and hot dog buns. Either one will do, it doesn't matter, we love them all. And then, look at that big beautiful bowl of, of salad, with circled, framed with sliced tomatoes, and then topped with very expensive shrimp that, you know, somebody's gonna hog a bunch of, and there's not gonna be enough left. Some red slaw, I don't know what that is over there, I don't know what that is over there, and something else over there, and yes, we've got a little bit of white pant activity going on. Yes, we do. Well, I hope they're all pretty liquored up when they see what the real main course is. How much do we all love a beautiful rose suckling pig? Yes, pineapple rings with maraschino cherries across the spine. An apple, and since this is California, also a lemon in the mouth. They got a lemon tree in the backyard. And so this flavorful beast can see us as we devour his flavorful flesh. An olive with a pimento pupil. So he can see us as we all dive right in. Oh, fine! He didn't want a roast suckling pig. Be that way. Wait, you guys. Why collectively as a society have we all turned our backs on shish kebabs? Remember shish kebabs? Yeah. Why are they gone? Let's bring them back! Except, you guys, we might as well get it out in the open right now. Seriously, not joking around. I looked at this slide pretty good, and I was thinking to myself, you know, it is like a half a chromosome away from actually being a tiki. You can make shishka tiki bobs. <laughs> well, one afternoon, I had a little too much time on my hands. I know, it's a scared monkey from I don't know where. <laughs> Speaking of monkeys, maybe you didn't want monkey. Monkey shishka tiki bobs. Maybe you wanted hot dogs, fine. <laughs> Let's go, follow me. We're going on a field trip adventure excursion extravaganza to the lovely space age city of Downey. <laughs> sister city of Upland, of course. Uh-huh. Yeah, so is the city of industry, the sister city of commerce. Uh-huh. Anyway, we're not talking about commerce. We're not talking about the city of industry. We're talking about that beatnik up there driving that roadster right over the top of that tiki-style hot dog stand. Yes, which of course is right across the street from the lesbian cat. <laughs> uh -huh. I know. Okay, you didn't want a hot dog, you wanted steak fingers? <laughs> we're not quite in Hawaii yet, you guys. No, we're a long way from Hawaii. We're in Tucson, Arizona. Yeah, a friend of mine was driving me around Tucson, showing me, showing me all the like vintage neon signs or whatever, and he goes, you gotta see this one. And it actually is animated, it pulsates. And uh, he said to me, you know, the locals have a name for it. And I'm what? I'm like, don't tell me. He said, what? I said, the flaming butthole. He said, how'd you know? <laughs> and then we drove a couple miles around town. Next thing you know, where? Tiki 
Motel with full cable, HBO, and ESPN. And apparently, we're not there. So there's a couple rooms away, Wobo. All right, he was fine. And then I said to him, he said, oh, by the way, though, don't you love the fact that the Tiki thinks that spotlight is a microphone? <laughs> I know. But he said, we have a nickname for this one, too. I said, what? He said, the Flaming Vagina. <laughs> yeah. Behold the glory. Okay, fine. I don't know what came over me, but I just thought, you know, Thanksgiving needs a little mixing up. Thanksgiving is our most boring holiday. All we do is eat golden buttery brown stuff. Don't we? So I thought, why don't we do the tiki turkey dinner, and instead of a roast tom turkey, we can have a roast tom tiki. And here he is now. Yes. Well, thank you. So anyway, after I made him, I was very delighted by the side of him. I didn't actually serve him. I made other little meatloaves on the side that I sliced up and everyone gobbled right up. Then at the end of the night, he was sitting there and I thought to myself, I don't think I can let you go. We formed a bond over the today and all of that and everything. And you were such a wonderful guest at the party and everyone loves you so much and I do too. How about I throw you away tomorrow? I'll put you in the refrigerator. Well, I put him in the refrigerator. A week went by, I'm like, I can't get rid of you. Two weeks, three weeks, six months. He was still in the refrigerator, covered, covered with tinfoil. And I thought to myself, okay, I'll be real about this. When this tiki turkey meatloaf actually begins to smell, then I, that will be the sign to me to let it go and throw it in the garbage. Well, guess what, you guys? Two years went by, and I didn't smell a thing. Finally, after two years, I thought to myself, I think we need to reunite. Can you believe that? I know. Where do we begin? Well, you know, there's a fifth grade science student still inside of me, thankfully. Unfortunately, it did not make it into my new book, which has come... No, it did! What am I saying? The two-year-old version did not make it into my new book, Holiday Jubilee, which is coming out in the fall. The publisher refused to let me put the two-year-old one in there. She said, we actually want people to buy the book, okay? <laughs> but if you don't like that book, you might like this one. It is available, addicted to Americana. I called it that because I am... And a little bit of business before we get going on our Retro Dream Vacation Slideshow Tour. The Long Long Trailer, you know that movie? How much do we love trailers? How much do we love Lucy and Desi? They made a movie in 1954 called The Long Long Trailer, and it's one of my all-time favorites. I'm doing a Retro Slideshow Tribute and screening of the classic that's coming up in Beverly fucking Hills on August 17th. Alrighty, here we go. All aboard the SS Lurleen bound from the Los Angeles Harbor to Honolulu, Hawaii. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the SS Lurleen. And by the way, I just looked up what SS means. I thought it was like steamship. No, it means screw steamer. I don't know if they think because people screw a lot when they are on these boats. I'm just not sure. But anyway, it doesn't obviously matter right now because we're not talking about screwing. We're talking about going to Hawaii. Yes, we are. And this ship, I will have you know, was the ultimate and most glamorous Recently, I took my mother to Hawaii. I just thought it would be a nice thing to do. You know, mothers love Hawaii. So I went online to find, like, where we're going to stay. And you know what? I just decided, I don't care if it's $9,000 a night extra. 
I'm gonna go the extra mile. We're gonna stay at the Royal Hawaiian. I cannot recommend it enough. Of course, I'll be paying it off until the end of time, but who cares? I don't care anymore. Some things are just worth it. Yes, to stay at the legendary Peak Palace, which is the ultimate place to stay in Hawaii since 1927. Behold the glory. Cannot recommend it enough. And they give you free banana muffins in the morning. Yeah, those banana muffins were like, you know, about $50 a piece when I did the math. But anyway, whatever. Here is what they don't have anymore, but I highly recommend that they bring back the ultimate pose spot, a firework explosion of Vanda Orchids, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that gorgeous? And how much do you love the lady on the right? She thinks she's Cinderella with her clear purse, her clear plastic purse, and her clear plastic shoes. And then we've got a lovely couple there, and then, well, a couple lesbians. Um, I love the bold eye one on the right, like, hi, say cheese. Uh -huh. I'm a little stiff right now, ouch. Speaking of stiff, it's probably because they wore themselves out surfing. So you guys, so I went to Hawaii, and I started asking around for like, where are the artifacts? Where are the vintage things? I mean, where can I find? Tell me you have one of these surfboards, Royal Hawaiian, in the attic upstairs. And they go like, we don't know what you're talking about. So I don't know what happened to that surfboard, but boy, it sure looks like it was difficult to surf on, doesn't it? <laughs> I know. And speaking of surfing right now, Surfside Dining Cocktails. I love how the C on cocktails is a little tipsy, don't you? <laughs> First of all, I love gorgeous signage, and this is a masterpiece in so many ways. Um, even though the wind blew the letters around a little bit. Queen Surf, Surf Wagon Dinners. Don't you love that the S is coral and the rest of the world word is like baby shit diarrhea yellow? <laughs> $2.95 and Entertainment Nightly. The font of optimism, optimism appears there, just like your grandma's handwriting. Isn't that gorgeous? I know. Speaking of surf riding, here is a surf, this is, this is a surf mobile, this is a surf wagon, you guys. And now, back in the day in Hawaii, from probably the 40s through the 70s, this is one of the vehicles that you might take a ride around the islands in. Isn't it gorgeous? This is a, I believe it's a 41 Chevrolet, and of course they saw the roof on it and put that on there for you all to be able to see out. I have only seen one of these. They are rare, rare, rare. But last year at Tiki Oasis, maybe it was the year before, they all run together um, in my memory. And it's so important to make memories in life. But anyway, one showed up at Tiki Oasis, and of course everyone beheld the glory of it. But you wanted dinner, fine. We'll have dinner. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, here we are right now. Don't you love this buffet? Is this the most gorgeous buffet you've ever seen in your life? I'm not exactly sure what's there to eat, um, but I'm pretty sure Spam is involved. For Spam is the number one meat product in all of Hawaii land. Now, by the way, just in case that you get a little bit like overstuffed or whatever, you're feeling sick to your stomach and you need to rest, <laughs> you can go to back to your room and take a little nap. Oh my God. Where do we begin? How much do we all love it when a, an outrigger canoe and a bed have a baby together? Isn't that gorgeous? I know. And somebody left their lay on the bed, and I'm not sure what, if anyone's going to get laid here. I'm not sure what's going on back there. I don't want to know. I don't want to know, but anyway, I love how they have like, like slats on the side, so in case, well, you don't fall off, I know. Uh -huh. Okay, fine, you didn't want to stay there, you wanted to stay here, say hello, ladies and gentlemen, to this, the Sheraton Maui, built in the year of 1963. An oddity by any mid-century modern standards, it is quite the extravaganza of circles and swirls and cocktail umbrellas on three levels. Isn't that gorgeous? I know, I want to stay there. 
actually in that little crescent moon shaped swimming pool and I love it like the people stay up there on the cliff if they just want to go down and visit their friends they can just tumble right on down how convenient I know and then maybe they can just tumble right on into the sea but before we do that we have to check out the lobby I don't know about you but I have never ever seen an image that made me think that this is what the entrance to heaven must look like. I don't often think about the entrance to heaven, rare, because I know I'll never be going there, but whatever. But anyway, you guys, first of all, I hope heaven has carpet that looks like this. Because this carpet is heavenly. I want to know who the interior designer is there. Who did the columns in forest green and white stripes? Who got those hanging plants there? And who did that lighting that when you walk down there, I'm thinking we could have sucked up there, don't you think? I mean, that's the only way I can imagine that it goes. You walk in there and you're gone. You're in heaven now. Oh, God, you didn't want to go to heaven. You just wanted to take a nap in one of the rooms. I love when you walk into a room and you have to immediately begin to concentrate on fighting off a seizure. I love the harmonious relationship between the bedspread and the wallpaper. It didn't matter what kind of painting they put up on the wall because they knew nobody was going to be looking at that. They were going to be flip-flopping around the floor, trying to not swallow their tongue. I know. Sometimes you just got to lean into it. Wait, why is every goddamn hotel room on this planet beige now? Bring it back! Bring it back! Okay, you didn't want to stay there. You wanted to look through the layers of time, and you wanted to stay in, in another iconic place in Hawaii, the other iconic place, the Moana Loa, built in the year of 1901. And don't you love those canvas umbrellas, you guys? That palm tree leaning in, trying to be friends with them, and all the way over to the Banyan Court, and that beautiful Banyan tree, which is there to this very day. I had to go check it out. And here we are at the Moana Banyan Court, and this is the radio show, the Radio Hawaii show that was on the uh, uh, that was broadcast around the world from 1935 to 1975. That brought the entire world's attention, Hawaii, to the entire world's attention. And I wish that it was still going, but it's not. Coast to coast, north to south, the mainland, Canada, Australia, and Europe. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Hawaii calls. Fine, you wanted to go to the international marketplace? I know. I love the ladies, the ladies' dress over there. The green one is a timeless classic. And behold the glory of the all-new for 1957. Fair Lane 500, four-door hardtop by Ford. Yes, and lipstick red and white isn't missing a wheel cover, though. Socially unacceptable. But how much are we loving the international marketplace, you guys? Built in 1957 by Don the Beachcomber himself. Isn't that gorgeous? I know. Now, you can barely see, like, where it says international market. Look all the way up the A, between the A and the T on international. Look all the way up that pole. You can barely see, but I'm so glad that I'm able to deliver the close-up. Um, it looks like a pig and a moose had a baby. <laughs> then went in drag and stuck breadsticks <laughs> in its head. And then glued on two giant carved surfboard, bur surfboard ears. Isn't that gorgeous? I know. Someone needs to bring this back. It's too good. 
It's too good. It makes me want breadsticks, by the way. I know. And then, oh, you guys, it was a place where you eat and buy souvenirs and listen to music and everything. And the velvet paintings. These velvet paintings are world-class national treasures. Let it not go unsaid. Behold the glory of these. And are you guys aware of downtown LA? There's a velvet painting museum, the Velveteria. Apparently, I've been hearing lately, have you been there? Who's been to the Velveteria? You would love the Velveteria. You would love the Velveteria. And you guys back here, too, I can tell you the time. Anyway, so you guys, I couldn't believe, I went to the Velveteria, and um, they had a velvet painting of me on the wall. Between Finn Scully and Miley Cyrus. I don't know. I didn't ask. But I went back like two years later to see if it was still there and it was gone. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, well, okay, I understand. So anyway, then while I was there, I mean, I hung out for a while. Pretty soon, um, well, I had to use the restroom and I walk in the restroom and who's hanging in the restroom? You're looking at him. Apparently they thought I was only good to hang in the restroom. Well, all righty then, speaking of live music, here is some now. I love the little girls wearing oversized moo-moos. <laughs> Mommy-o, Mommy-o, and Daddy-o. The hanging microphones. That beautiful roof line that they're underneath. The flowers there. And the fact that the, the, fa the fact that the thatching. You don't say fact that the thatching very often, do you? The fact that the thatching is failing on the front is fine. I know. Now, speaking of thatching, even at International Marketplace, you guys, even the trash cans have thatched roofs. Isn't that gorgeous? I know. Every trash can should have a thatched roof in this world. The dreaded, I better take your picture, honey, because someday, in Santa Ana, in like maybe 2019, they might have a show and you might need to be in it. Yeah, I mean, you know, our lives do matter. Um, they do. And you guys, how much do you love the tiki? How much do you love the T and the A? How much do you love everything about this photo, including the Hawaiian shirts, by the way? How much do we all seriously love Hawaiian shirts? They became... Hawaiian shirts and moo-moos are the ultimate Hawaii souvenir back in the day. And uh, by the way, I was told that it was a Chinese merchant who made kimonos in 1935, had a little extra kimono fabric, and he stitched up what came to be known as the Hawaiian shirt. And the Hawaiian shirt, as we know it today, was first advertised in a Hawaiian newspaper in the year of 1935. So thank you, Mr. Whoever, you kimono maker man you were, whoever gave us the Hawaiian shirt. Behold the glory of you and every single Hawaiian shirt that has come after. I know. Uh-oh. There are mannequins in our midst. How much do we all, seriously? Like, how could something so right be so wrong and something so wrong be so right? Mannequins have scared me my entire life. At least neither of those two children are missing limbs. But I love how the adults, you only get the torso on the adults. But aren't those clothes gorgeous, you guys? I know. Luau sportswear? I want to go to that shop. And you can even make friends with mannequins. <laughs> Prize collectibles are the clothes they're wearing. Now, and I know that creepy arm she has there bent like forever like that, at least she does still have her hand. And that guy, that mannequin guy, I can't think of what Hollywood celebrity that he looks like, but he looks like somebody. I don't know. I'm not sure I want to know because we're too busy right now going shopping at the mall. Yeah, the mall. We're going to the mall in Hawaii right now. This store is called Mac and Ernie's. So I, didn't, I couldn't get the pronunciation just right on it for a little while, and someone in Hawaii said, just think Mac, like Mac and Cheese, and Ernie, like Bert and Ernie. Mac and Ernie's. 
Yeah, so it's McInerney's department store. They began retailing in the year of 1856. Here you see the most gorgeous department store ever, practically, in Hawaii, built in 1959. In the parking lot, you have on the right a 57 Plymouth Belvedere, and how much are we loving the lipstick red and white 58 Chevrolet Bel Air. Isn't that gorgeous? I know, but how about that abstract mid-century modern style mural of the islands of Hawaii? Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? Bulldozed, but you guys, so when I was in Hawaii, I thought to myself, I have got to go see if food land is still there. First of all, I love any place that ends in like land or ville or any of that, don't, or planet or world, don't you? I know. Um, anyway, so I went to find this. I looked it up, and I'll be darned anyway, it's still there! Yes! This cross between a flying saucer and an igloo of a grocery store, it is still there standing, built in the year of 1959. You want to get pineapple? Don't bother getting it there. Let's go here to the Dole Fresh Pineapple Pineapple Stand in Helimano where you better wear blue or you're going to stand out. I love the lady there. She is not used to fresh pineapple. She doesn't want to get pineapple juice all over her bosom, apparently. And then the lady in red is the grouchy one that was on the boat in the beginning. She's still grouchy. She's wearing a hairnet. I love that. Anyway, speaking of pineapple, where do we begin? Only in, pineapple, only in Hawaii between the years of 1927 and 1992 when you find this, the Aloha Tower. And this is at the Dole Pineapple. I mean, this is not the Aloha Tower. Sorry, I lost my mind. This is at the, the water tower at the Dole Pineapple Plant, where they process more pineapple than anywhere else in the known universe. And yes, these are the hostesses there and the lesbian in the middle. I don't know who she is, but um, anyway, I think those uniforms are ready for their close-up. All I want to know is, who is the creative design genius that thought to put, put a kick pleat at the pubic area? And then, don't you love the pineapple patch pockets? I mean, ladies and gentlemen, where do we begin? And how about the little pineapple top coming out of the pocket like a hanky? But here's the question. Seriously, where is one of these dresses now? Life is a treasure hunt. I want to take the time when I go to Hawaii next time to ask everyone there who has one of these. I want to see one in person, don't you? I know, because it's a masterpiece. And here are all the ladies wearing Hawaiian shirts to work um, that are processing our pineapple and turning it into juice and slices and chunks and bits so we can cook with it and eat it and put it in things and stick multicolored toothpicks and stick it onto things. I want to say thank you to all the women and all the men who ever worked in the processing plant in Hawaii. Thank you for all that pineapple. Thank you for wearing those gloves. And thank you. I mean, really, I mean, we never get a chance to thank these people. So anyway, and then this guy, all he cares about is not sure I want to know. Maybe he's going to chew on it all afternoon. I hope that's all he's going to do with it. Anyway, uh-huh, I know. And the tour continues back in the room. OK, I want to know, like, who is the person that this hotel hired to buy the art? No, it's going to be amazing. There are going to be two paintings. They're almost going to be exactly alike, except one is going to have a little swoosh of yellow in it. A perfect backdrop for three ladies who are gathered around this pineapple without a top. I'm not sure if that means something, but I think they're about to embark on a lesbian threesome, aren't you? Speaking of lesbian threesomes, here's one right now with their tour guide. They have emerged from their 1957 Cadillac Fleetwood 75 limousine, finished in jet black, yes, 
A limousine takes you around Hawaii to show you the sights. Like this. Baby lamb that had a baby with an octopus. Bah. I know that, and that. I love how those two ladies will touch. The other one was like, I ain't touching that shit. I know. Uh-oh. How much do we all love vintage train rides? You know, you guys, seriously, not joking around, Disney, Disneyland, I almost call it Disneyland, oops. Disneyland conditioned me to see the entire world as a great big theme park. Because it is. Everywhere you go, there are attractions. Every time that I get on the freeway, I think this is just like Autopia. <laughs> That's how I just kind of soothe my inner soul as I drive around this wild and wacky world of ours. Except the one thing you have to be careful not to do that. And <laughs> the person in front of you. But every time I go somewhere and like ride a train or whatever, it's like a ride at Disneyland. When I get on an airplane, I think this is like getting, it's just like, it's almost like getting on a ride at Disneyland. Almost. It's similar. Also, I always hope for turbulence. <laughs> oh, I do. What a bore a flight is without any. I want to feel like we're about to go down. Don't no, you? We never do. <laughs> Still here, aren't we? I know. You know those rough landings where you think that the, the wheels are going to come right up through? Oh, no. We are fine. Anyway, this is the Maui sugar cane train that ran in Hawaii from 1850 to 19, like, 49 or whatever, and then it went away and people brought it back in 1969 where it ran as an attraction. And then what happened was it went out of business in 2004, but it's still there and they are desperately trying to get it back and it went on the website today and it said coming back in 2019. So let's hope so, because we love to go places and see and experience unique things. We don't go to places to see what's in our own backyard, except we could, because if we wanted to ride a train like this, we could just go to Disneyland right now. Which I always enjoy riding the train around Disneyland, because there's that dinosaur still chewing on that grass. <laughs> oh, I always think to myself, as long as that dinosaur is still chewing on the grass, then the world must be at least pretty okay. Kind of okay. The other one that always does that for me is when you're Pirates of the Caribbean and there's the dog at the jail that has the chain, I mean the key in his mouth. I just, there's that one moment and I always look at him my whole life since I've been this big, I've been looking at him. And as long as he's still there, I think, okay, everything must be all right. But if not, if you want to do a little praying or whatever, you could go here to the Mission Soto Temple in Waikiki. Um, it is Pagoda meets Outer Space Age. It was built in the year of 1953, and it is still there. I went there when I was in Hawaii, and I was so excited. I pulled up in the parking lot. The bus wasn't there. The, the guy with that bright shirt wasn't there. The lady who wants to be an Academy Award wasn't there. But there was a, one guy sitting in a car in the corner in the parking lot. It was kind of creepy. I didn't pay much attention. And I bopped out of the car and ran right up to the front door of the place, locked up tighter than a drum, so I didn't get to see the inside. But I can tell you the outside still looks just like it. This is not the inside of it. This is on the Big Island. Uh, this is the St. Benedictine Catholic Church, and it was built in 1899. Thankfully, it is still there, so we can go there and behold the glory of the priests that was apparently hitting on that crap pipe when he painted all those murals. I don't know about you, but I think he did an amazing job. And not only that, candy cane pillars? Where do we begin? I know. Gorgeous. Still there, thankfully. And here we are at Waimea Canyon, the Grand Canyon of Hawaii. Warning! Move away from rim at any quake or sign of collapse. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> Speaking of, here we are now. Well, you know, they're very hospitable in Hawaii. You go there, and back in the day, they used to, like, just kiss all over you. They don't do that so much anymore. Things have changed, but she's kissing up the wrong cheek there because that man is holding a purse. 
It's his man bag. I love this lady. She's got her moo moo on. Looks amazing with her her uh, her uh, hibiscus in her hair and her horn rim glasses and her big Hawaiian leg and her push up bra. And instead of an evening bag, she picked up a turtle from the the garden. She's gonna carry that around with her. Here is my snapping turtle. Snap, snap. I know. You know, it's always accessorized with wildlife, you guys. I know. And then this guy, it's like, dude! It's like 1964, and you're wearing a skirt to the party? That's awesome. That is awesome. More of us gentlemen need to be, if I had better legs, I'd be wearing a skirt like that right now. And mind you, I would never not want to wear the black sock and the black dress shoe. Isn't that gorgeous? I know. Our, oh, here we are now. Okay, a beautiful rich sea. A beautiful rich sea of a Hawaiian luau of a party. How are you doing, sir? You having a good time? I can tell. I love your jacket, by the way. Why don't you stand up and model it? From the Sandwich Isles, ladies and gentlemen, the classic Hawaiian, can you see that? That is, now did you guys know that we see a lot of these jackets? Um, the red and white is rare, sir. But I will tell you, did you guys know they were rental jackets? Like if you were going to your corporate party and it was a tiki party or what, a Polynesian party, you would rent these Sandwich Isle jackets. So thank you for wearing that, sir, and gracing us with your presence. You look wonderful, and it looks great over black. Nice shoes, too. But we're not talking about shoes right now. We're talking about the fact that you would look, and all the rest of you would look, fit right in here like, wouldn't you? I know. I, I feel sorry for the lady in the middle, right in the middle there. Apparently, that, that poi is making her sick. I know. And then... Along comes Brooke Shields. Yes, along comes Brooke Shields. And uh, anyway, this man does not get to kiss on anyone but his wife very often, apparently. For it causes him to squeeze the fleshy upper arm of his lovely wife. I know. And then... Yeah, she forgot to pop in her little cap there. But anyway, never mind that. It doesn't matter when Katie Lang is bending over you. <laughs> Offering a little Dixie cup or one of those little whatever those are folded accordion paper cup that we've all loved to pick apart and make it flat and go like how wonderful this is. I know. Dinner is served. Rose suckling pig, indeed it is, but finally we have reached the pinnacle peak of our trip to Hawaii. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the luau. Now it's time to begin our journey home. This gives a whole new meaning to, yes, I got laid in Hawaii. Indeed it does, yes. So I couldn't believe when I went to Hawaii on the way home, I mean at the airport, I like said, I'm going to do the traditional thing. I'm going to go to one of those lay stands at the airport. You know the lay stands at the airport? They have been there. You don't? Yeah, the lay stands at the airport. Since 1945, they've been there. But there's not that many of them anymore. I mean, I guess people don't buy them that much anymore or whatever. So I bop out of the car thinking it's going to be like $50 for one. It was like $5. It's like, raise the prices. Anyway, okay, fine, you don't care. Uh, but anyway, okay. This is not any normal airplane, you guys. No, this is the Douglas DC-3 Viewmaster. Not to be confused with the 3D thing. No, I'm not talking about that Viewmaster. This is the Viewmaster airplane. And what makes it the Viewmaster airplane, you guys, is that it has five foot long windows, wow. which were great in theory to see the view of the beautiful Pacific below you. But unfortunately, once you got to a certain altitude, the whole plane did like It was not structurally sound, so they all split in two and fell into the sea. I know. Anyway, and this is our grumpy, our grumpy lady, Mrs. Grumpy. Here she is. Apparently her friends have had it with her and said, just go back up 
<laughs> little further back as they pray that the pilot is up there about to turn the on key on. What a great evening it's been, you guys. It's been a marvelous audience.